This week on Loyal TV, we learn how a daring aviation race from Oakland, California to Honolulu, Hawaii created a renowned museum in the Osage Hills of Oklahoma. Really, the birth of the museum was almost by just happenstance because in, in 1927, uh, Dole Pineapple decided to sponsor a race from Oakland, California to Hawaii. And th that flight had never been made before. And it was quite a flight back in those days. Dole Pineapple tried to get Lindbergh to fly because he had just flown to uh, Europe. And, uh, and Lindbergh said he would have nothing to do with it, that uh, he could miss Hawaii. There was no way he could miss Europe. And, um, and he just felt like it was way too dangerous to, to do it. A pilot by the name of Art Goebbels had an airplane. He wanted to enter it into that race, but he didn't have enough money. And so he approached Frank Phillips, and Frank sponsored the airplane and named it the Wooler Rock. It's a single engine prop plane that had a pilot and a navigator, and they were separated in that airplane. They couldn't even uh, talk to each other. Um, they communicated, they had a string, and they would literally put notes on it and, and send it back and forth to each other. But uh, they navigated by the stars, and, uh, and they also, they were one of the few planes that, uh, that did have a radio, and, and they would communicate with, uh, with some of the ships uh, as they were flying the, the Pacific. But, uh, oh, I mean, to, to consider it a, a, a daredevil move is, is uh, beyond the obvious. I mean, it's, uh, it, it took quite an adventure to, to even take, take off on, on that kind of trip. But, you know, that was sort of the days of that kind of thing back in the 20s. It took 26 and a half hours to fly from Oakland to Hawaii. Planes were lost at sea. Several people died during the flight. But only two finished, Woolerock being the winning plane. The Woolerock plane was victorious. And uh, after barnstorming the country for about uh, a year advertising Phillips Aviation Fuel, it came back here and he had to put it someplace. And so that's when he built the hangar up on the, on the hillside. He was collecting more art at that time. People were donating more art to him. And he was filling his lodge home with it. And, and the overflow, he was putting up there in the hangar. And before long, he had more art in the hangar than he had room for the airplane. So he added, he built another room on, kept shoving that airplane further back and further back. The plane's been uh, completely restored, and it's quite a sight, because if you know the story of how this place and that museum started, and you enter the first room of the museum, you gotta wander your way all the way through back to the seventh room, the seventh gallery, and then all of a sudden, there it is. There's the airplane, and it's, it's kind of fitting. It's like, oh yeah, that's, that's what started this thing. As the Woolerock Museum continues to grow, we hope you take some time to wander to the back and see the plane that started it all.